All right. Um, welcome back, everyone, uh, to our last geophysics and tectonics seminar uh, this year. I'm happy to announce our speaker this week is uh, Sarab Baruha uh, from the Northeast Institute of Science and Technology. Um, and who'll be talking to us about the complex seismo tectonics um, in Northeast India. So thank you very much for joining us, uh, Sarub, and whenever you're ready. Yeah. Uh, so I am fortunate enough uh, to be the last participant uh, of this uh, seminar, uh, which is being conducted uh, by the University of Kentucky. And here I'd like to first acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. Kelly uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to deliver this lecture. And also, I'd like to thank my colleague, Dr. Santanu Borua, to get me introduced to Dr. Kelly so that uh, I am before you with these deliberations. So as I start, the, uh, I mean, the topic of this tonight, uh, today's uh, seminar that is complex seismotectonics of uh, northeastern region of India. So, why the com complexity is? So that I'll try to explain over the uh, next few moments, and what is the reason behind? What is that attraction that seismotectonics domain of Northeastern region of India pertains to? Why it is so attractive to the lot of researchers throughout the world? And why, uh, I mean, we are frequently getting a lot of earthquakes occurring in this region. It is the one of the most seismically active regions in the world. And why it is seismically active? So those things, I'd just like to uh, bring to your kind notice. And moreover, whatever the studies will do, that should have impact on seismic hazard assessment. And that seismic hazard assessment ultimately is the goal because whatever we are doing, that is towards to serve the science and society. And while doing the science and society, we have to know what are the seismological or tectonics or the geodynamics we want to know that should incline to the proper seismic hazard assessment map of that particular reason. So here I begin with my first slide. <clears throat> So as you see the, now I disconnect myself here. So as you see this slide, uh, this is very known to all of us. That is 116 million years back. That is Jurassic early Cretaceous time. During this time, particular time, we know that there is a Panthalasa, there is a Tethysi. And if you happen to see the greater India and the Australia, Antarctica, all these are continents of where together, but gradually they're because of the geodynamics, they are moving apart. This is all very much known to us. But as you see, 59 million years, that is in late Pleistocene reason, because of the geodynamics, because of the uh, tectonics and this greater India, Indian plateau is moving towards north. As a result, there is a continent-continent collisions which started occurring in this particular region. And as a result, there is a delta accretion formation. There is a delta progradation formation. And here in collision boundary, there is another feature comes up that is called subduction. And as a result, these delta progradation what you see, the river, uh, I mean, the sea that is we known as Bay of Bengal, that is the easternmost corner of India uh, that has reached up to the collision of the zone, it will grade towards present day Bay of Bengal 
uh, uh, regime. Now, what is what we want to see here that uh, the Braille group and late for the late Eocene time, that is 45 million years, Himalayan collision reaches the maximum east and a syntaxial band serpents, but still widens ocean basin and delta progression shows here in this domain. So gradually, this all these features is known to us. And you see here the green surma basin, the entire uh, Tethi Sea water or the Bay of Bengal water that has slided down back to the south. And as a result, it has reached somewhere at this point. And what we see, uh, basically, there is a Himalayan region come, uh, came up be lifted up because of polyandry, uh, uh, I mean, subduction. And if you wish to see to the east of uh, this uh, delta accretion zone, there is a subduction. And there is another feature that is called Brahmaputra River. And all these things has developed during Miocene period. So the resultant is the present day scenario. And the result in this present day scenario, like this. And as a result, as we have seen from Tethys Sea, then late Miocene and less Pleistocene, and uh, with the present day scenario, what we are observing is nothing but the geodynamics, it is moving towards uh, a Northeast region to the Northern region and it is to a great millimeter pile and here the goal 55 millimeter as a result, there is a relative velocity between the these two regions this is arabian sea and this is uh, bay of bengal and what you have just seen as i said that there is a progressive movement towards north and this progressive movement has shown that it is a huge as the serpent or syntaxial band going on in this region. So, and the region is under the zone of compression and it is moving towards north northeastern directed. And as the and that there is a rotation going on right at this moment uh, along this direction. <clears throat> so what we see, at when there is a rotation, there is a point of rotation, exactly. So in that point of rotation, what happened, you just try, we just try to see. And this is the star. And can we imagine what happened at this particular point? This is nothing but the May 12, 2008 to an earthquake occurred, which is of 7.9 in the Richter school, which struck Wenchan country in Sichuan province and which has devastated almost 391 dams and damaged by the quake. 69,197 people were killed. 374, 176 people injured. 18,000 listed was missing. 4.8 million people became homeless. Can you imagine, this is the place in China, in Sichuan province. And this photograph was taken by me. This is school, this flat band, this is a school. Almost we have lost 20,000. Uh, school children, school going children in the during this semi, uh, I mean uh, particular earthquake and there is a lot of devastation. Now the question is, if you happen to see this photograph, entire city has been devastated like anything. And this entire city, Sichuan, I mean Wenchuan city has been uh, devastated like uh, anything. Why it has devastated? Now the reason is, the entire city was built up near a fault line. We are building a city 
near a fault line. Had we known that there is a fault line, we could have assessed properly what is the seismic hazard uh, point of uh, hazard to that particular reason. But we are not known to seismic hazard uh, of that particular reason. So that way we have built. So the proper seismic hazard assessment is one of the main important view. And here, why I have seen, shown this particular uh, photograph, the reason is this is just a 300 kilometer away from uh, a large earthquake which occurred in 1950. And this large earthquake occurred in 1950, uh, 15th August. And during, I mean, almost uh, Almost uh, uh, during 1950, there was no, not much devastation, not much devastation because the population was less. But when we see, saw the Wenchuan earthquake just 300 kilometer away in the northeastern region of India, this is the northeastern part. And if you happen to see this particular map, there is a lot of earthquakes in the collision boundary. And this collision boundary, 1905 Kangra earthquake in the North Himalaya, and then 1934 Bihar Nepal earthquake, 1897 Great Assam earthquake, and 1950 that particular also Assam earthquake known as. And subsequently, if you happen to see uh, the Northeastern region of India, that particular cornermost, that is Wenchuan province of China, and this is almost 300 kilometer away. Now, if you happen to see this particular uh, um, picture, just remember this particular picture. This is China. This is the north to the China, and this is an Arunachal Himalaya. Entire region is Arunachal Himalaya. It, and this is the syntaxial band where that uh, directivity map as I showed you and that is uh, playing a very important role because it is sharply bending uh, uh, towards uh, uh, eastern direction and when it is bending it is bending towards north northeastern direction so that way what we see uh, that there are three rivers this is the big mighty Brahmaputra river and this is the uh, Alluvium plain of Assam Valley, and this is uh, uh, in Indo Myanmar subduction zone. And now, here it is subducting towards eastern direction, and this is the collision towards northern direction. And very importantly, if you happen to see the Shillong Plateau, this is the Karl Shillong Plateau. And this Shillong Plateau is, uh, 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 it is vertically being uplifted at the rate of 40 millimeter per year. So uh, uh, there is a, another valley, I mean, intruded uh, uh, tectonic domain that is we call as Mikir Hills Plateau. And near Mikir Hills Plateau, there is a, um, a national sanctuary where one horned rhino is available. So it's a very important touristic site. But what we want, want to understand from this picture, this photograph or this satellite map, uh, that this is subducting towards north in the collision boundary. This is subducting to the east uh which does have a benny of june and there is a vertical upliftment uh, of shillong plateau and this is the bengal basin and as you know this is the bengal basin as you know if we go to the next map if we happen to map of india and show the red line these red lines are gigantic faults. To the north, you have main boundary thrust, and this is the fault lines you are observing. This is the fault line we called MFT. And uh, this is the subduction boundary that is called eastern boundary thrust. That is the subduction is being conducted here. This is the Dauki fault. This is the Dauki fault. And there is our network here, which we are operating since long. Now there is two star, 1950, 15th August, 1950 earthquake. Here it occurred. And Wenchuan earthquake of China is just 300 kilometer away. 
And in 1897, there is another earthquake that is 12th August, 8, uh, 12th June, 1897. Now, if you happen to see there is a hat type structure, uh, this hat type structure means, that means it has produced more than 1G kind of acceleration. So what is more than 1G kind of acceleration? That means it has nullified the Earth's gravitational pull and uh, just lifted, tossed up the materials available there. So besides this two 1950 earthquake and uh, 1897 earthquake, a lot more other earthquakes, which is of around seven magnitude, which is uh, shown in circles here, 1918, 88 earthquake, 1950 earthquake, 1950 again, 1943. This is the largest um, in Assam, Bheli, uh, that is a 7.3 magnitude earthquake. So if you see the entire northeastern region of India, then you just find uh, some great earthquakes as well as some large earthquakes. And the reason is the complexity of the tectonics of this particular region. Now, we have seen how the strain is being developed. So the higher color, that is the pink color, that is the highest strained resin. And this we have developed uh, in, from, uh, I mean, global earth model, that is GEM. And from that GEM, uh, we have tried to uh, superimpose the uh, I mean, GPS directivity map, which from our local network, as you understand, as you see, the directivity map shows that it is directed in north, northeastern uh, of India. And just it is rotating accordingly. And there is a Wenchuan province and somewhere here. So this sharpening is a really a typical phenomena for this complexity of northeastern region of India. And at the background, you see a lot of black colors uh, lines, and these are nothing but the uh, mesh of faults that is embedding the northeastern region of India. So as we see the strain map, what it has uh, actually incorporated in the strain map. So as we understand in comparison to the streamlines, we just see, uh, I mean, a large earthquake rather a great earthquake, which is of 15th August 1950 earthquakes, 8.5. And we have done several uh, geomorphological studies from here. And as I understand, this is the figure, I mean, photograph that was uh, taken during that particular earthquake. Here, a rock mass is just embedded and it has uh, gone inside into the trunk of the tree. And when it has, why it has gone inside the trunk of the tree, that's a big story. That means it, this particular earthquake has also developed uh, 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 more than 1G kind of acceleration. And it was so furious that it has tossed up and it has gone struck to the trunk of the tree and just embedded inside that particular happen. So we did, we carried forward a lot of geomorphological studies, a lot of geodynamical studies, paleoseismic studies in this particular reason. The, our main aim was, that means, can we infer some of the issues, which are some of the points, some of the informations, so that uh, that becomes an input to the seismic hazard assessment of that particular reason. So as we understand, this is from R.D. Oldham's uh, picture uh, during 1950 earthquake. If we happen to see the entire hill uh, has splitted into two, and uh, this is uh, written in the caption, the hill split in half by the earthquake. And it is just be beside a mighty river that is called Lohit River, which is a part of the uh, river. So as you understand, this is the Lohit River and a lot of active techniques. We did active fault mapping in this particular region. In the fault mapping, what we saw that this is from Tibet and is now just entering the uh, China border to uh, northeastern region of India as it enters during that 1950 earthquake. So this particular 
John, this particular hill, small hillocks you are observing. So that particular hillocks, actually there is an abrasion. During monsoon fly, flood, there is a lot of water that is flowing through this river. And uh, this picture was taken during the peak uh, winter season when there is a less uh, flow of water. So what happened because of that abrasion, this is not now visible. It is just there is an obstruction of uh, this flow. As a result, now we can this you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, yes, connection is. Is it okay? Am I uh, I I can hear you, but it's a little bit uh, breaking up for me. I don't know if that's true for others. I see. It seems okay. You could, sorry. You can continue. It seems okay now. Uh, Okay, yeah, there, it seems to be, no, you're, you're still um, breaking up. Or wearing me. Uh, so as uh, I was discussing, that means we saw the split in, uh, I mean, uh, split in due of uh, a hill top during 1950 earthquakes, and which has divided into two, and that was the picture uh, taken during 1950 earthquake. But recently we visited, and still the remnant after 78 years, uh, you can say, still the same remnant is prevailing. So it gives us very good enchanting, uh, uh, I mean, overview, how the tectonic active mapping geomorphological approach uh, we can carry forward that we have done uh, over this uh, reason. And as we move forward throughout the uh, syntaxial band, during this winter season, it is totally inaccessible reason, but during winter season, we can, we can visit a bit uh, deep into the jungles, deep into the river sections. And if you happen to see clearly this particular, uh, I mean, picture, you see the four, four different fault scarps. And the rest, uh, uh, I mean, the most recent one is the lowest one. How we have identified this particular uh, four different fault scarps, we've identified just by looking at vegetation, height of the vegetations, young vegetations, and then another layer of vegetations, then another layer of vegetations, and the topmost layer of vegetations. So all these vegetations are really distinct enough to understand about the fault scarps and their upliftment. And the subsequent upliftment uh, also uh, helps you to understand what is the rate of upliftment. And nowadays, uh, we have introduced the LIDAR to understand because no vegetation is visible. Uh, just underneath, we can see happening. So that uh, is also one of the instrument that you can really uh, take care of. Now, as I see, as I uh, said that while moving in the, uh, during active tectonic mapping, we th throw river sections, we just wanted to see what is the availability of fault. So we've moved down across the fault, I um, mean scarp, and when we move down across the fault scarp, then we could identify exactly where there is an uplifted terrain. This is the uplifted portion. And here the fault scarps moves and the fault line is 
in this direction. This is all are visible, uh, uh, I mean, in the sections. So this, this was an unique features that uh, we have identified and all these are related to 1950 earthquake, which is very recent one. As I said, the mighty Brahmaputra has three tributaries and these three tributaries are one of the tributary is uh, Siang River and it originates from China. And as it flows down into the, uh, in India from China, uh, the panoramic view is looks like this and stratigraphy of bed of Siang indicate deep oriented towards north. The deep is oriented towards north. And now the question is, if we happen to, if we happen to see the another section along the river uh, Siang, then obviously what we observe that the topmost layer is nothing but a alluvial soil. And it is now followed by a thick uh, a soil bed, which is not alluvial, but it is filled with some kind of conglomerate. Now the question is either this particular reason has got uplifted from the river bed or the river itself has gone down to the present current state. So this is either an upliftment or river has uh, embedded down uh, to the current flow. So these kind of features help us to estimate the river sections. And from these river sections, we could identify what is the rate of upliftment of these quaternary deposits. Now, as we understand, as I said, along 1950 earthquake, we just uh, went through a lot of, uh, I mean, river sections. And in river sections, if you happen to see the uh, fault scar, this is a almost eight feet height fault scar, and the fault line is moving along this direction. And this is the total station profile of the fault scarps. And as a result, what we see basically, uh, uh, that means the fault is neither a small one, but it is elongated. It is elongated, almost 200 kilometer length it is uh, embedded. And this fault exactly, it's a, not a straight line, but again, it is a sharp bending, bended. And if we happen to see another uh, river section, and this is in this river section, uh, we clearly see the fault scarp in the middle. And this is the uplifted part is the starting of the fault scarp. And the fault is passing through along this direction over the, and the same uh, scenario we uh, saw in another river section, that means the abrasion here that was also raided down um, by the water flow uh, along these sections. And that way, there is another, uh, I mean, false curves that we could identify along this. These are all due to this 1950 earthquakes and the earlier earthquakes as well. And this we have published in EPSL 2019. So as I said, <clears throat> 1950, apart from 1950 earthquake, that is 15th August, which occurred somewhere here, there is another earthquake that occurred in 12th June, 1897. Now the question is 12th June, 1987 and 1950 earthquake both produced more than 1G kind of acceleration. And this is the isosesmal map which has been prepared by R.D. Holdham, the then Director General of Geological Survey of India. And he mapped a very nice uh, cartoon here. What you see this cartoon, if you happen to see clearly this cartoon, and this cartoon is showing some pebbles, some pebbles. You see there are two pebbles, two uh, places, and there are two pebbles, one and two. These two pebbles were somewhere uh, in these two spots, and they were uplifted uh, because of the earth seismic and when they are uplifted, they have come to this position. And that means when they are tossed up, 
when they have tossed up, uh, what it indicates that uh, they have nullified the 1G kind of acceleration. Fortunately, during that time, there is no massive infrastructure. There was no, uh, as such, um, big uh, higher population, but uh, in comparison to the present situation. So that's why uh, the, I mean, uh, death rate and destruction rate was very much less, even though it was 8.7 megatons. But what we conclude from here, that means the reason has experienced more than 1G kind of acceleration. So that is a important information for us. And if you happen to see the isocentral map of 12 June 1897 earthquake, this is the epicenter of that particular earthquake. If, if you see the epicenter, which is the western part of uh, a northeastern region of India, and this particular region has given a big uh, and blow to the entire region, which is almost 2000 kilometer also it has been felt. And that way the isosessment map itself depicts uh, a different scenario uh, uh, here. So in that case, when we see the isosessment map uh, here, and the, this particularly indicates that mm, the region is not free from any kind of liquefaction. That means there is a lot of liquefiable zone that is available. And now I come back to another vital point that is the seismicity point, map of northeastern region of India. Here in this case, you just see the database which is collected from 1897 to 2017. And we have got a regional network that is from 1984 to 2017. If we see that is a lot of earthquakes is bound here and this particular map is showing that uh, uh, I, uh, I mean Assam Valley is devoid of earthquakes and there is not much epicenters but entire region of northeastern region of India is embedded with the earthquakes is uh, originated with the earthquakes epicenters. And if you happen to see north, south and east, west directed uh, depth sections, what we observe that the bottom of seismogenic zone mainly stands up to 50 kilometer. And in the subduction zone, if you happen to see here, here in the subduction zone, uh, that is somewhere here, it has gone, the epicenters has gone down to more than 90 kilometers, almost 150 kilometers. So that is in the Eastern of Northeastern region of India. Now, the question is, if we see the seismicity dist uh, distribution of Northeastern region of India, which is embedded by Nepal, Himalaya, Bhutan, Himalaya, Chinese, uh, Tibet, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. And if we happen to see here, we observe that uh, and there are a lot of earthquakes that is embedding, that is originated in Northeastern region of India. And this is the, if we just close your eyes, put your finger, you will get your finger will touch upon an epicenter of an earthquake. And uh, that is the seismicity pattern of uh, Northeastern. But the depth section, if you happen to see, zero to 45 kilometer depth, this is the scenario. Now, when we go down to uh, 45 to 90 kilometer of depth, we see the scenario and uh, there is less earthquake between 40 to 90 kilometer depth. And if we happen to see uh, the entire uh, northeastern region of India is devoid of earthquakes when we see just uh, above 90 kilometer. So what we understand basically for northeastern region of India that um, the reason the bottom of seismogenic zone is 40 to 45 kilometer where the moho is situated. Moho is uh, just estimated from these earthquakes. And uh, we have done a lot of uh, reflection and refraction study, tomographic studies from this database. And that has informed that the bottom of seismogenic zone is 45 kilometer. Now, what understand? Uh, this uh, earthquake is characterized and the characteristics says that it is neither a, a 
kind of it is pertinent to a uh, kind of a particular uh, nature of an earthquake, nature of mechanism. It is a mixed kind of mechanism. All the three types of earthquakes, strike, slip, thrust, and normal that are prevalent here. So this hasn't been a unique or uh, uh, not um, devoid of uh, complexity then we would have uh, thought of uh, a, a particular kind of mechanism, but the focal mechanism solutions indicate it is filled with all the three kind of mechanism. Of course, just at the easternmost corner, that is in indo will take not much time. Uh, am I audible to you? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, fine. So, uh, um, so as I said, uh, the complexity of reason, so we could not identify exactly which dominant mechanism is uh, prevailing here in this reason. So out of this, what we did, the stress mapping. That this is the present stress pattern uh, out of these, uh, uh, I mean, focal mechanism solutions. And what we have done, we have divided the entire reason, uh, what you have seen in the last slide, that all the focal mechanism solutions into 10 different divisions. And this is very carefully done. These divisions has been done very carefully. And uh, this is in, concurrence with the tectonics, in concurrence with the geodynamics, in concurrence with that strain available, in concurrence with the uh, geodetic survey. Uh, so all these features has been taken consideration while building these, uh, I mean, blocks. Now the very reason is why we need to know different blocks because our ultimate goal is to design a seismic hazard assessment map. So what we did th this way, we tried to found out and find out uh, what is the uh, principal stress direction that is sigma one in this prevailing reason. As you understand, the sigma one is not the same. The principal stress direction is not the same. It is different and it is not only different uh, I mean, topographically, but in the depth wise also, it is different. As you happen to see this particular reason in, in Indo Myanmar, zero to 45 kilometer depth, it is almost uh, north east, north of northeast directed. But as you go to the deep, it almost becomes north south. So this peculiarity is due to the subduction and at the at particular this particular depth i mean 90 to 160 kilometer depth what is happening it is aligning with the uh, north south collision pattern of northeastern region of india so this all features we have to know prior to development of a seismic hazard assessment map because we have to we have to do not only science but also to disseminate all the inputs of science as an output to the society. So that is in terms of a development of uh, a seismic hazard assessment map. So we tried to see the seismic tomography of Northeastern region of India as well. And uh, this is the depth sections at uh, zero kilometer depth, at 10 kilometer depth, at 20 kilometer depth, at 30 kilometer depth, at 40 and at 50. As I said, we have considered up to 50 because the bottom of the seismogenic zone is 50 kilometer. Now, this is in general, uh, the criteria is that as we go down deeper, then uh, velocity increases. But uh, this uh, is, uh, I mean, taken from almost 56 number of seismic stations we have considered within an, this particular area, I mean, 500 by 500 kilometer area. So, what we see, we at certain depths, at 20 kilometer depth and at 30 kilometer depth, as well, little in 40 kilometer depth, we see the low velocity zone. And that is the cause of the ODE, because what is the reason for 
uh, a low velocity existence of low velocity zone uh, in this particular uh, lower depth, I mean, uh, in the deeper depth, the low velocity zone identification of low velocity zone has inferred, has helped us to infer that it is a stress concentrator. That means stress accumulation is going on uh, through these, uh, I mean, at this particular depth, and any time that stress, accumulated stress may be released. So this has helped, this seismic tomography map of Northeastern region has helped us to understand that at what depth, what particular depth that low velocity region prevails. So that we have achieved that, that is almost up to 40 kilometer along certain pattern, as I mentioned, 1943 earthquake in Assam Valley, that particular region is uh, the stress concentrator right at this moment uh, that we have inferred from the seismic tomography map. Now, we have seen the complexity in geomorphological features through active tectonic mapping. We have seen uh, the splitting of hillocks. We have seen uh, the 1G kind of accelerations. We have seen the varied focal mechanism solutions and ultimately we have seen different stress pattern and stress concentrator, low velocity zone at deeper depth. And those things we have just integrated to this particular methodology that is called probabilistic seismic hazard assessment. I will not describe this. This is well-known cartoon, the well-known figure, as we know. So we have developed all those notations, all those uh, informations available behind us, available with us to make an input to the development of uh, whatever the, uh, I mean, uh, information we have in an integrated matter in the form of a seismic hazard assessment map of Northeastern region of India. As we see, and here we have taken different kind of uh, attenuation model that is subduction model and reverse faulting for a different model and strike slip faulting model. And this faulting model, uh, model helped us to understand, to tackle the different dynamism complexity of the seismic tectonics regime of Northeastern region of India. Now, as you see the uh, hazard map, this hazard map has the input, whatever I have shown, right from active tectonic mapping, the slip rate, the directivity mean strain map, focal mechanism solutions, then, uh, uh, I mean, stress pattern, and uh, absolutely, the next uh, phase is the seismic tomography uh, derivation. So what we observe from uh, this particular model, that means seismic hazard map, as we estimated, this gives us the peak ground acceleration at any point, uh, if you happen to put your cursor here, at any point, it gives you the peak ground acceleration. As you know, from this peak ground acceleration, uh, uh, the designer architecture, they design their buildings and, and the seismic coefficient they draw from this particular map. So this particular map was drawn for one second period and also three second period, which a structure may uh, incorporate into. So in that, um, with that uh, things in mind, so uh, we have integrated all those parameters to develop this seismic hazard assessment. And here, I just stop my lecture that integration. So that integration leads us to the seismic hazard map of India. And so what we have seen, we have seen the active tectonic mapping of 1950 earthquakes. And we have seen the 1G kind of access, more than 1G kind of accelerations. We have characterized the source, dominant mechanism is unknown. We have seen the ma stress mapping and the stress mapping is vivid, it's uh, different. And the directivity is still uh, not much resoluted. 3D seismic tomography shows that low velocity zone pertains. And as a result, integrating all these four uh, points, we have developed the seismic hazard map. And we now know uh, what is the peak ground acceleration. And peak ground acceleration, 
will give you the seismic coefficient that will be incorporated by the designer to uh, characterize the probable next future infrastructure development. But the reason is how much realistic all these assessment is. So to make it more holistic, realistic, and more uh, methodological, we have to have detailed con comprehensive study, which will no doubt enhance our understanding about the complex geodynamics of Northeastern region of India. And right now, as I say, all in all those terrains, which is inaccessible, but which is accessible during winter season, dozens of maybe if I do not consider the pandemic, dozens of seismologists, global seismologists, global tier geodynamics and uh, tectonic person geomorphologists, they are roaming around to in search of uh, a, a, a much more realistic information. So uh, with that notation, I uh, stop my, I conclude my lecture here and I thank all the listeners for their patience hearing and also for bearing me during disruption. Uh, if there is any more questions I can take forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly, for organizing this wonderful seminar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Glad for everyone. Um, all right, all right, we have a question. Uh, Yaron Ritzma, um, would you like to ask your question? Or I can just read it. Um, is the hazard in Northeast uh, India higher than elsewhere along the Himalayan front? Well, uh, Northeast uh, hazard is, uh, as I showed, that it has crossed uh, more than, uh, what I'll say, more than uh, 1G kind of acceleration. So hazard is really very high. And if you happen to consider the earthquakes uh, that has been produced by in Northeast, that is 12th June uh, 1897 earthquake. Uh, I mean, that was magnitude was 8.7 and no such earthquakes has occurred till now except in Himalayan boundary, that great Nepal earthquake. So uh, in comparison, if we really compare entire uh, Himalayan region is hazardous, but of course, uh, Northeastern region of India needs a more focus in this regard. Thank you. Um, are there other questions, Dr. Bruna? Yeah, please. <clears throat> so I'll ask one um, because I am not familiar with um, how um, seismic hazards, uh, I guess, work or how you put together these maps. But the the stress you were showing, um, the stress fields where you had the 10 different blocks seems to have yeah. very different stress directions. And so um, your hazard map is telling you peak acceleration, but do you need to take into account or like do developers also need to know the direction of stress or do they just need to know about the acceleration? Uh, uh, well, uh, while deriving the um, hazard map, you need to know mainly the rupture, that rupture direction. And while knowing the rupture directions, in during that time, that has uh, I mean stress comes into the play. So it's a fault model. And fault model, I suppose, uh, from a particular point uh, where there is a fault is located, we wish to develop uh, the hazard map of a particular city. So what we are need to understand what is the rupture area of that particular fault and what is the dimension and length and breadth of that particular fault and what is the stress or strain rate being developed at this uh, along this particular fault that are the main inputs to the ha hazard uh, model the, so uh, during formation of attenuation model all these parameters plays a very important role so that's we have taken care of. And of course, um, the stress is a one of the parameters that is very carefully handled 
during the preparation of seismic hazard map. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and I apologize, I missed these questions uh, earlier uh, from Jay Pulliam. So if uh, I'll read them, but if you'd like to, to jump on, you can. So the first one was, uh, your plate reconstruction cartoon suggests that the crust south of the Dauke Fault may indeed be entirely oceanic, as suggested by Talwani. Uh, is this your view as well? And Jay, if you'd like to ask your questions, you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm. The, uh, exactly, Dauke Fault uh, is considered to be oceanic only. The very reason is, as you the progradation started uh, from Dauke Fault and it has stopped in Dauke Fault. And when there is a Shillong Plateau upliftment, and that Shillong Plateau is not a southern boundary of Shillong Plateau is nothing but the Dauke Fault. So we can consider the Dauke Fault as one of the southern boundaries. And of course, it is entirely oceanic in the sense because entire Bay of Bengal, it was, uh, uh, it was up to the collision boundary to the Arunachal Himalaya, Bhutan Himalaya. Mm -hmm. So obviously, uh, because as the, there is an Holocene upliftment, the southern boundary, uh, that is the Dauke Fault, uh, may be considered as oceanic. Why not? Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes perfect sense to me as well. So my other question had to do with the northern boundary of the uh, Shillong Plateau, the Oldham Fault. Do you think, is that a settled question? Does the Oldham Fault really exist? Well, it's a, um, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, there is a lot of debate uh, whether Oldham Fault exists or not. Um, as some people say the Brahmaputra Fault which flows along Brahmaputra. Uh, but uh, it has been observed uh, from a few publications that mm -hmm. there is an existence of Oldham Fault. And we have surveyed the reason uh, for uh, surface mapping through active fault uh, mapping. So in during that time, the surficial features, uh, I mean, is not that much prevalent that, and yes, there is an old dam fault, existence of old dam fault. But obviously, if you happen to see the underneath remnant of old dam fault, then we obviously find some kind of features uh, underneath, which is nothing but just at the almost 20 to 25 feet below the surface of the earth. Because we have done um, MASW survey, we have done resistivity survey, we have done uh, several geophysical surveys, mm -hmm. gravity mapping as well. So all this information indicates us, yes, there is a rupture along certain faults, which we call as, as Oldham Falls. And it is yet to be published. It is under preparation, those geophysical surveys. Okay. Thank you very much. And I enjoyed your, your talk very much as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Pulia. Thank you. Uh, uh, John Encarcion has a, a question in the chat that I'll just read. Um, you interpreted the rock that was embedded in the tree as being thrown by ground acceleration. Can you rule out that it was not simply part of a landslide or rock avalanche? Exactly. Uh, if you happen to see uh, that particular map, it is not surrounded by any kind of hill, hilltops or hillocks. It's a single, yes, that was a question that has been uh, discussed as well. Uh, had it been near a high hillocks, uh, uh, then there could have been a landslide and rock avalanche and which could have embedded inside the tree. But uh, it was a totally a plain ground and there was in a, just a tree and we have seen this rock embedded and that is explained uh, while taking the, this particular uh, photograph as well. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions, Dr. Abdurra? All right. Well, if there are no other questions, then let's uh, thank Dr. Bruja again for joining us and for the wonderful talk. 
yeah just before concluding i would like to thank uh, dr kelly uh, and all the listeners uh, for conducting this and here is a big platform for me to invite all of you uh, to collaborate with us northeastern institute of science and technology uh, we have got uh, no doubt uh, a good exposure to the earthquake seismology and uh, here I'd like to acknowledge uh, my work with uh, Strasbourg University, France, uh, North Star Norway and uh, of course EOS Singapore, Earth Observatory of Singapore. So uh, what I presented here, uh, it's a outcome a few of them are outcome of those collaborations. So again, once again, I thank you all for your patience hearing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night much. from India. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. You're free to stick around if anybody wants yeah. to chat, but thank you very much. Thank you so much. And I'll thank see you, you all next year. Namaste. 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 Namaste.